Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Within 25 years, England will not have enough water to meet demand. That's the stark warning today from the head of the Environment Agency. The impact of climate change combined with population growth means the country is facing an existential threat, says Sir James Bevan. He's calling on people to cut how much water they use, as Danny Savage reports. Oh, look, there's one even, even worse further up. After the last few days in northern England, many people will be surprised to hear that there could be a water supply crisis in years to come. But remember what it was like last summer. This was one reservoir near Bolton. But an awful lot of precipitation is needed if these reservoirs are to be replenished. Eight months on and things certainly look very different. I couldn't stand now where I was then. But the Environment Agency says that regular cycle of supplies running down during the summer months and then being replenished by winter rain is something that won't meet our future needs. The suggestion is that we are going to have to drastically change our attitude towards using water. What are customers doing differently? So we're selling far more shower enclosures than we are baths. Uh, people are changing their bathing habits uh, these days. They, they tend to shower rather than fill in a bath. It appears we are concerned about water if it costs us. A lot of people are on water meters now as well, so they're very much more aware of how much water they're using because obviously their bill goes up every month. The Environment Agency say these are some of the things we can all do to save water. Take short showers, not deep baths, get a water-efficient washing machine, turn off the tap when brushing your teeth and when it gets hot, don't water your lawn. It will survive. So what do the people living near the brimming reservoirs think of those ideas? We've got so much water around and they're telling us to cut down on it and there's not going to be any. And there's plenty of it around, so yeah, yeah. You think there will always be plenty of water in northwest England? I think so, yeah. Plenty of it. Well, I think, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, it's something we're going to have to get used to. Um, obviously, there's lots of water around here, but nationally, we can't actually use as much as we do at the moment. Part of today's appeal is based on the belief that we will get more summers like last year. That certainly would put supplies under pressure. Danny Savage, BBC News, Lancashire. Now, an existential threat. That's how the boss of the Environment Agency described the risks posed by climate change and population growth. Sir James Bevan warned that unless we all take drastic and urgent action, England could run out of water within 25 years. He wants wasting water to become as socially unacceptable as blowing smoke in the face of a baby. Andy Davies has this report from Somerset. Escaping the jaws of death is how the head of England's Environment Agency dramatically entitled his speech today. The jaws of death, he explained, the point when rising water demand outstrips a falling supply. It could happen in 20 to 25 years' time, he warned, at the current rate. First thing we need to do is to understand what is happening here. And what is happening here is climate change. It means that in the UK we will have hotter and drier summers. Uh, by 2040 we expect that more than half of our summers will exceed the temperatures that we had in 2003. That in turn will mean more water shortages. Drought risk will be higher, he said, with climate change reducing water supply and population change increasing demand. 67 million people now in the UK projected to reach 75 million by 2050. So what needs to change? Revive the era of building new reservoirs, however politically contentious, is one of his recommendations. Build more desalination plants, more sustainable drainage systems too. Get water companies to up their game on fixing leaks and help them share supply. Escaping the jaws of death? It's, it's a bit overdramatic, isn't it? It's a dramatic way to say about a problem that I think we do face as a nation, but it's also different across different parts of the nation. It's more severe for the southeast of England. Other parts can possibly become donors to, of water and look at resolving that problem. But possibly the most important element in all of this we heard today is our personal use of water. And that needs to change radically, said the Environment Agency boss, to the extent, he said, that wasting water becomes as socially unacceptable 
as blowing smoke in the face of a baby. We are all going to have to play our part. We need government as well to, to do things like make sure we're not building water inefficient homes and have a, a label for water using products to show whether they're efficient or not. But when it comes down to it, all of us are going to have to stop wasting water. Which means, they say, not watering lawns or leaving taps running while brushing teeth using low flush toilets, taking short showers and not deep baths. Measures some of those we met at Chew Valley Lake in Somerset this afternoon were already adopting. I've seen that happen at work before when someone's put on a dishwasher just because it's that time of day when there'd been like a few <laughs> mugs and a few teaspoons in and I actually sent an email saying I think this is really wrong. Yes, I do think about reducing but the amount of moan water. At me if I don't pull the chain after using the loo, you see, but you should you should do that, shouldn't you? Well, we Save do water. have a, mm. a low water mm. one, mm. so, or mm. one you, of them. You've got a low flush. Yeah. Yes, you have a full, in ours, you have a full flush or a low yeah. flush. Yeah. Well, we don't use the washing machine so much as we used to, and we're um, cutting down on watering plants in the garden just to try and save a drop more water. Currently, the average person in the UK uses 140 litres of water a day. Reducing it to 100 litres a day over the next couple of decades is a target the Environment Agency in England says it likes. Andy Davies there in Somerset, and I can now speak to Andrew Tucker from Thames Water. Andrew's a water efficiency manager for the company. Do you agree, then, that wasting water has got to become as socially unacceptable as blowing smoke in the face of a baby? It's quite an extreme way of putting it, but everyone's actually playing their part right now. The water companies and other stakeholders have been talking about this for many, many years, but the messages that we've heard today from the Environment Agency certainly put it on the agenda. You have been talking about it for many years, but you're also wasting 695 million litres of water every day, and that is the worst in the industry. So isn't it a bit of a double standard asking customers to watch their game? when you're not doing your bit. We are actually doing our bit. It's actually not a double standard. Leakage is something that all water companies anywhere in the world, in any global city, face. You're the worst, though. We're the oldest and the most complex uh, network. And the way to look at it is Google Maps. Just scan back and every single pavement, every single street, we've got pipes going to your house and taking wastewater from your house. But you've missed your targets yeah. for two years. Are you going to hit your targets to tackle leaks? This year? Next year? We will be hitting our targets in the future. We've got very aggressive targets of 15% reduction by 25, 2025, and that expands up to a 50% reduction in the future. And well, yeah, the Environment Agency wants leakages cut by 50%. And that's the right thing to say. Absolutely, we completely support that. That's why we've embedded it in our business plan. So it's a twin-track approach. We're rolling out meters and helping water, uh, customers on water efficiency in their homes, in their business, and we're playing our bit. Uh, by reducing leakage as fast as we can. We've never fixed so many leaks at the moment, and we've got more teams out there than ever before. Well, actually, in the last six months of, of last year, you lost more to leaks than in the same period in 2017. I mean, things seem to be going backwards. We had the most, or well, the whole nation had the most challenging year. We had the beast from the east, closely followed by the uh, record hot, dry drought, or a record summer. And what that did is put the system under stress. So we've never seen so much water demand from households and businesses, which is fine, but that puts a, a, an old network under pressure. But I'm hearing a lot of excuses from you, but customers, meanwhile, are having to foot the bill, aren't they? I mean, you're increasing customers' bills again this year, aren't In you? In real terms against inflation, the bills actually come down. So what we're doing today, we've also launched a new water calculator online. So every single customer, in fact, everyone across the nation, can jump online and work out what their family is using and what they could potentially save. Well, but online, it also says that charges for many of your customers will increase by more than 5%. That's what your own website says. Yeah, but says. in real terms, 5% over against where in the past, in real terms against inflation, it's a decrease. But what that's doing is paying for record infrastructure investment. We spoke to a million customers for our next business plan, and they're telling us we need you to reduce your leaks, which we're investing in. Yesterday, we signed a £200 million leakage detection contract with the best in the industry to really address this agenda. Twin track approach back to households. Little savings they make there, like we've just seen in the recent article, can really save their energy bills as well as their water bills. Do you think, I mean, you plan to start paying dividends to your shareholders again next year, as I understand it. Should that happen, or should you put that off until you've got these horrendous leakage figures under control? I think the key thing is to look at the amount that is being invested in this thing. It's the most we've ever invested. We're looking at a plan next year, in the next investment period, of nearly £12 billion to look at infrastructure. At the same time, we can actually help customers reduce their own bills and their usage. 
because it, it, by doing those things together, we can look at securing London's future. So shouldn't the shareholders do their bit too and, and the go dividends The again. shareholders are actually doing their bit by putting hands in pockets to actually help us get this thing um, addressed. Because it's a very, we're looking at the security supply for a world, a global city, London and the surrounding areas. And it's absolutely key, uh, crucial that we keep doing that. Andrew Tucker, thank you very much.